Hi folks, so this is about as random as it comes, but about three weeks ago, seemingly out of nowhere, I got a call asking if I wanted to come be a judge on Project MFG. And the more I learned about this, this is absolutely amazing. We're gonna go walk through those doors you know, right now. And what you're gonna see is four of the top trade schools in the country coming together to compete for a $100,000 prize uh, doing, and this is what I love, five access machining, multi-access you know, multi toolpath, advanced manufacturing, welding, building a project, prints, change orders. Like it's a very practical aspect. Um, and what I love is this is all being driven by the desire for promoting manufacturing skill sets, trades, capabilities, uh, something that I think we can all, if you're watching this channel, I can't imagine you can't get behind that. And um, I do see some of the struggles in this world of education around manufacturing. Folks that don't have the curriculums that support modern industry or the trades or the equipment. I mean, this stuff isn't cheap, I get it. But if there's an example that can be inspiring or show how to do this and how to do it right, this is it. So um, I'm kind of sneaking my way around here. It's kind of funny I'm filming other people filming because this is going to be some version of a TV show or something. But I care about this, like getting these teams together, these kids together to do this. It is absolutely amazing. So I probably have to be quiet because again, they're filming, but first off, take a look at this lab. All the simulators here, just rows of Haas machines here, like a legit film crew. And yeah, they're not really focusing on this part during Project MFG, but look at this manual lab. Absolutely incredible. There's a whole row of ST15s. I mean, this is just insane. setting up a Duramax, I believe. This was the sample part that they showed us. The students have design and uh, freedom on the actual spinning bearing part. Good. Is that just a putty, silly putty? Yeah. Good enough to hold it down on the CMM? Yeah, just to keep it steady from when this actually probes it. Yeah, sure. From moving. So I walked in this morning and got to meet my fellow hosts. I'm here with Shannon. Okay. So what is Weld Like a Girl? Weld Like a Girl started off as a girls and women's empowerment project. And I soon found out that boys and men want to learn how to weld too. Okay. So it's co-ed uh, co classes. We use sculpture or fabrication projects um, to introduce people to welding. And uh, projects can be based between two hours and eight hours. And uh, what people do is they sign up and they register for whatever class they want to take. And by the end of the day, they go home with that project. So you, anyone can sign up for these classes? They're in Arizona? Yep, yep, Where do they Arizona. find out more about you or the classes? Well, look a girl.us. Okay. And um, we do stick tig, mig, and flux core. We do plasma and oxyfuel. Awesome. We, um, we will have a CNC plasma soon. I know that's kind of up your alley. Yes. Um, it's a little uncomfortable for me, but I'm going to grow into okay. those paws. Uh, I'll learn. Good. Um, but, uh, but the majority of the people that I work with want to get their hands dirty. Yeah, absolutely. They, they have desk jobs or whatever it might be. Yeah. But I do also work with um, new community sculptures and commissions and have kids almost always involved in that. Yeah, that's awesome. So their names will be on the sculptures as well. Um, my first intern, whose name is on one of the sculptures in town. And cool. Yeah, work with high schools, two high schools that don't have welding programs. Okay. They are both charter schools and they come three hours a day for five days a week. Oh, wow. One of them four days a week, one of them five days a week. Yeah. And, um, and they build really big stuff for the community. And you did Project MFG last year as a judge as well? Correct. Okay. You're a fan? Uh, I, I completely believe in this mission. It's amazing. Um, I was in Philly Shipyard for one competition, but the Nationals yeah. were at Lincoln Electric last summer. Yeah. And uh, just an amazing program. And I think one of the things that we really need to focus on is making the trade school again. Yeah. I love that. It's awesome. Well, it was good to meet you and be, Very nice you be judgy with you this I week. Know, yeah, be judgy. yeah, awesome. Okay, so you guys already met Shannon. I want to get our other. Well, you're you're a judge and you're kind of like the MC of this. Two hats. That I'm Two hats. Well, so introduce yeah. yourself. I am Drew, the MFG Crow, and I'm here to you know kind of keep some things spiced up, uh, keep the energy high, and um, hopefully help uh, these smart judges choose between who's gonna get this hundred thousand dollars i came from uh st louis missouri i was from you know the zip code with the highest murder rate actually and i thought my options were really really limited and um you know all the statistics applied to me so uh single bomb uh that was trying to raise us working a bunch of jobs i found my way to the streets 
and I was a teen father, two-time felon before I was 18, and I found manufacturing, and, you know, it saved my life, really, and, you know, I started off on the saw, and that wasn't enough for me, and I learned manuals. Mm -hmm. yeah. That wasn't enough. I wanted more. Went from there to CNC, and then programming, and that's the beauty about manufacturing. There's so many things that you can do once you get in, um, and I kind of done them all, so I've uh, consulted and ran some of the largest brands in, in the Midwest, and now I am an instructor at uh, a college. I run the Advanced Precision Machining Department, That's awesome. and um, I'm on tour, the new American Manufacturing Renaissance Tour, coming to 18 different cities. We're trying to bring awareness and access to these trades, uh, to the communities that don't typically get to see these trades or get to you know uh, work with 3d printers or can't afford the software to get on so um, I'm just trying to bring these trades to everybody and you know keep our keep our industry great where can folks learn more about you and about this Renaissance tour um, so people can find me at the mfg.com um, you can also see me on mastercam has a landing page for our tour uh, modern machine shop you can check me in the Forbes uh, recently, we talked about the tour, and you can find me on LinkedIn, Expert Andrew Crow. Um, we got the flyer. I'll be, you know, super crazy blasting it everywhere. If you see a city that you're from or close to on there, please hit me up. I'd love for you to come out. We're not charging anything. There's really dope hands-on um, uh, presentations and stuff from people in the industry, and I would love to see you guys there. We were, we were kind of talking when we were not judging, uh, but you were talking about your first background. And look, it's, it's really cool to see how everybody ends up in manufacturing because ultimately, you know, I'm here because I, I want to do what I can to pay it forward. And you were talking about how and you didn't know anything and you were putting together a bearing or something. And it's like, yes. hey, you, you find some sense of ownership in this. And that's, yeah, that matters. So, I mean, you know, for a long time and, and having the labels that I kind of earned, you know, felon and teen father, I kind of felt like I wasn't, you know, somebody that, uh, you know, deserve to be here, you know, to be honest. And I got into that first shop and I saw raw metal become something that was, you know, helping uh, propel airplanes and fighter jets and tanks. And I just felt like, you know, my job mattered for the first time and I mattered for the first time. And it was the best feeling that I ever had. I never experienced that feeling before. And while we're here, this guy behind the camera was one of the reasons why I did so well in manufacturing because at the time, you know, there was not, you know, a lot of books, there wasn't a lot of digital curriculum, um, and, you know, I really didn't have a computer, so I had to go to the library uh, to look at <laughs> right. computers and stuff like that, and when you Googled machining at the time, um, there wasn't a whole lot of options for you to learn from, and this guy's material here, you know what I'm saying, from yeah. the beginning really helped me understand the trade at a deeper level and you know i'm hella grateful for that no, dude, so if i can do you, that man, on camera man but, but like that's the thing like i i'm not as i'm not super sympathetic to this whole uh trade shortage labor shortage because it's been around for 20 years and it's not something that's just affecting machining it's affecting everybody so it's not something that we can claim sympathy for and so it's this question of um how do i do a better job as a leader both within our own shop and on this internet thing about getting people to, like, I don't care if you don't want to be a machinist, but I want you to understand that there are things like that out there, and it can be super rewarding to see what you can do, whether you're modifying post-processors, programming parts, set up, tool and die, grinding, like, whatever you want to do. I tell kids all the time when I go speak to them that, you know, this doesn't have to be the career that you see yourself in forever, but if you get these skills and you get one of these jobs, uh, it could be the launching pad for whatever you want to do. So yeah. manufacturing definitely buys you freedom to be able to, you know, afford the life that you want to live and maybe go after those things and find the passion that you want. But I will also say that once this thing hits you, once you get that yeah. bug, yeah. it's hard to leave out of the industry yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, hey, good to meet you, man. Appreciate man, it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our fourth judge is Jim Overberg. And you are with? I'm with B. WX Technologies. We manufacture uh, Navy uh, nuclear reactors that power uh, submarines and aircraft carriers. So we put the spark of life into these uh, vessels uh, that support our warfighters and our defense. For no, it's seriously cool. It's, it's super awesome. I love it, and it, it gives me it gives me goosebumps. It really does. So it's exciting to be a part of that, and it's an honor. And I know you have more of a welding background, but you guys at your at BWXC 
do all sorts of manufacturing, including machining, right? That's absolutely right. We do uh, machining, uh, fabrication, welding, absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a very neat place. Uh, like you said, a lot of, a lot of shop work and primarily it's, you know, it's, it's, it's manufacturing, so yeah. it has to go through machines. Yeah. I'll tell you, if you, if you guys want to go down a Wikipedia rabbit hole, start reading what's out there. I mean, to think that you can build a huge submarine and it comes with enough fuel to last like 20 years is just truly mind blowing. And it fits in, you know, it's not a giant nuclear power plant, it fits inside of the submarine. So it's been really fun to, to meet you this week and appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Quick time out for an explanation of what's going on here. These four teams made it to the national finals for Project MFG. Prior to showing up in Wichita, they were given dimensional drawings and prints for the, I think two parts that they had to weld and three or four parts that they had to machine. They were able to do testing and programming and, and so forth prior to showing up in Wichita. But to keep the element of stress and real world nature to this, once they showed up and started the competition, there were a number of factors that they uh, introduced to again, keep it real. So number one, they were given change orders throughout the competition, which forced them to change their design and their cam and so forth. They were all on the time clock system, so they were both limited in the amount of time that they could be working, and they, I think there was a thing where they could sort of get penalized if they needed more help and it went overboard. Similarly, if they broke tools or uh, scrap parts, they could buy more parts, and all of this factored into their final judging score, as well as other criteria about the fit, the finish, the tolerances that were measured on that Zeiss, Zeiss CMM, and the other major criteria was how long the fan blade rotated under the air pressure of the tank that they welded together. That's all I'm gonna say because I hope you'll actually watch Project MFG when it comes out. I'm pretty sure it will at least be on YouTube and there was chit chat about whether they're gonna get it, uh, I don't know what the term is, syndicated onto a bigger network or platform. So I don't really know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm gonna interview all the teams. So can you guys introduce yourself? Where are you guys from? School, city, all that? Uh, Josh. Oh, I'm Josh, the lead programmer from STC. Josh. I'm Clint McGay, STC. Uh, my name's Chris, um, and I'm programming and welding. Yeah. Tyler, I'm from STC, and live in Northport. <laughs> I'm the manager of the operations. And where, sorry, where school or what city, state? I live in, I'm from Baltimore. Maryland? Our school is from Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota, Florida. Uh, Florida. Sarasota, Florida, okay. Yeah, some Coast uh, Technical College. Awesome. And what are you guys excited to be here? Like, what's yeah? It's yeah. fun. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think we're the we're the only biggest, biggest um, for our trade yeah. school. We're a one year trade school. These guys are in a one year course. Oh, interesting. Six month course. And he's, six months. he's in a high school hybrid six month course. I only go for half a day. It's just a couple think, hours in the morning. And you go to your home school at the other time. Yep. yep. Hilarious. There is, there are high schools. <laughs> this right is. Our I think it's just you like you the way we put it together. Yeah. Is like. For the, the group of us, like our teacher was like, yeah, I don't think we can do a different group. Just the diversity of the group yeah, yeah, yeah. helps out. Do you, like, like, on, like on the record for YouTube, like off the record, otherwise, do you care about the age difference? Like you guys get, oh, no, it's no. good? Okay. Don't even look at it. Yeah, yeah. I remember that when I was talking to a guy in college about like work, like he's like, you need to go work for somebody. Like you learn a lot being out in the workforce. Yeah. So obviously you don't have that benefit yet, but you get it through, cause you guys are, have been in an industry or a couple of you guys were in the service, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. 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 What'd you guys do? The past uh, lives. I was on uh, submarines. Oh, really? Yeah, I worked on Apache helicopters. Cool. And have you been in I'm industry? A chef. <laughs> yeah, you're a chef. Yeah. But that's, that's hilarious. Like, you were literally a chef, and then yeah. you're now in machine. Are you welding your machining? Machining. That's super yeah, cool. We all do the same thing. COVID, COVID killed the industry, and it watched it how you can just stop it. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, for my, myself and, like, my family, I need something sustainable. Yeah. I know a guy that went into machining, and I find it excessively interesting so it's super cool I, I don't think machining maybe you guys like didn't really it slowed down a little bit but there was not a halt to no. all of machining or no. manufacturing no which is okay. you, wait, that's true i do think it's worth noting we, we literally just did a video on like could there be a recession but um there have been times in the u.s and in the world you can go through where machining gets slow and like i think some people in our industry kind of think we've become invincible and that's not always a good thing because Things, right. things so ebb and flow, right. you know what I mean? Good. Well, Sarasota, Florida, right guys? Good luck on the competition. Thanks nice to meet all you guys. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah. What's, what's your name? Yeah, I'm Jason. Um, I'm from New College Manufacturing. Okay. And I'm a programmer slash machinist. Awesome, and? Ben Tubbs, Yuba College, uh, welder, machinist, and programmer. Awesome, Southern California? Northern. Northern California. Northern, Northern California. Okay, or, uh, got it. Sacramento. 
Okay, so it's kind of weird. As a judge, they just came in and they talked about what their interpretation was of this design. And you guys took what could be kind of an aerospace part, but pulled it back to your roots of ag in the design, right? Correct. Just super cool. Yeah. And you guys are up machining now, or you guys are up next? They're, they're up yeah. now, right now. Yeah. Okay, they're cool. They're watching a red light right now. Awesome. <laughs> nerve wracking. Are you guys not allowed in there? No, uh, it's we don't want to be on the clock because it's timed. Yes. Um, so essentially the way the program is run is that it's almost like you clock in for a job. Got it. So we only want two people in at a time. So that's what we're Because man hours. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. I like that. Yeah. Some, some real money. pressures. Yeah. Some, yeah, cool. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. How are you guys feeling this morning? Sounds pretty good. good. We got a top one for that guy done. Okay. Um, so we're facing this. Uh, just to get a good surface, and then it's going to start running hard. So really making chips. Mm -hmm. Can you show us the uh, your wheel top one? So this was top one for our impeller. Yeah, the engraving looks awesome. Yeah, but it uh, it's, that sounds fine. So, so what we're going to do? Uh, but using those jaws, we're going to hold this, hold the moss here. Uh, we're going to count. Uh, Dynamic inside contour, dynamic outside contour. Rotated 90. We're gonna come down in here with a quarter inch end mill and rotary the whole thing, <laughs> create a 30 thou disc. And once that guy's done, uh, it's gonna get glued to this back surface to create yeah. like a squirrel cage. Yeah. So that's awesome. I love this. It's a little risky, and it's kind of like something you would do with a parting tool insert or a different tool. But you got enough stock there to get a, sneak a thirty thou or a quarter inch tool in there to yep. squeeze a thirty thou washer out of that stock. Luckily, we've done it four other times. So it worked. It's awesome. It's worked cool. pretty good. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, you can see the tool path right there. Yep. That is awesome. Nice job. Thank you. Cool. How's everything else going? Good. Uh, so we roughed all the way down past here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got all the features here, so we're going to hold it that way, rough the whole thing down to this face. Yep. And then uh, it's finishing work from there. Cool. The last stuff that we do is just the pockets on the outside and the engraving. That's How are you handling the occluded feature underneath there? Uh, just kicking it up at a 45. Okay. And coming at it with a. Before the chart part change with this guy, we just took that three quarter inch bowl right. and came in here and just roughed that whole thing. but. With the rib there now, I just changed it to the quarter ball. Yeah. And did it that way. Yeah, it's got to feel good to have that one. Yeah. <laughs> have that done, right? Yep. So, let me find it. There you go. That is awesome. So, I'm just going to get glued on there. Cool. The individuals that you just saw wearing the blue uniforms, those are the folks from SWIC, Jacob, Connor, and Brendan. They did a great job, and I didn't get the chance to sit down with them, have them formally introduce themselves, but again, want to give them a shout out. How are you guys feeling this morning? We're doing all right. Yeah? Oh, Which yeah. part are you working on? We're starting our, our neck piece. Awesome. About to do off one on it. Limitations, we'll, we'll start to separate it out. Do they give you the uh, soft jaws, or do you made them? They, they provided these soft jaws. Okay. Uh, the last competition we had to uh, machine our own. Yeah. Tool holding is oh, our issue. Oh, we, interesting. Only, we only got one Jacob truck. There's more than one drilling operation. Got it. We don't have pallets that'll fit the drills we need, so oh. got to switch it out. Yep. Well, good luck. And the Calhoun Community College Warhawks. Guys, I am sorry. The way the schedule worked out in my own uh, video filming, I didn't get a chance to sit down with you guys, but Caleb, Barry, and Ross were the three competitors, and they did an awesome job, and here's what really stood out. When the uh, judges all first got there, the teams came through and introduced themselves to the judges on, this is all on like the TV sort of thing, and Caleb, Barry, and Ross did an absolute awesome job at introducing themselves, how they got into the trades and manufacturing and their background. They're from Huntsville, Alabama. I think the nickname is Rocket City USA or something of the sorts, but tons of aerospace work there. And uh, they had that perfect mix of hunger and humility. And all the judges looked at each other when they left the room after having introduced themselves and thought, man, these are three really sharp young individuals. So I want to give them a, sh a big shout out and again, an apology that I didn't grab the camera to sit down and talk to you guys. So we're in Wichita, which I didn't know much about Wichita, but it's kind of one of these secret or not so secret aviation capitals of the world. Like case in point, I'm just walking across a whole 
technology composite lab where they're working with composites, carbon fiber, et cetera. And so there's a huge backstory. Um, Learjet was out of here, Cessna, a lot of other major aviation history behind this area. And so this program is heavily influenced by that. Just as a guy who loves airplanes, they're just super cool. We're here in this giant aircraft maintenance hangar facility. Uh, and they showed us earlier, they were filming in here. We got to kind of just sit there and hang out. And this is some, I don't know, like a sample mock-up, uh, private jet where they did an interior demo and it clearly is not going to be flying anytime soon but um not every day you get to walk in and see uh what that's kind of like but that's pretty cool so this section isn't directly related to project mfg except it is we had some downtime i'm just hanging around poking around this incre incredible facility and i see this guy matt i want to thank matt absolute awesome time explaining what their robotics and automation sort of program was at WSU. A lot of focus is on the next generation of machinists and, and work and labor and pride and manufacturing and interest and passion. And I'm right there with you, I love it. But what occurred to me from having spent the week in Wichita is it's not just about the students. There's two other key parts of this picture. Number one, is the teacher. It's the mass of the world. We need more people like Matt and a lot of the other folks that I met at WSU that were absolutely passionate and skilled because we've all been there. We've had teachers that just were okay and we've had teachers that helped inspire us and lead us and we need to not only encourage that but figure out a way to make that more sustainable for those teachers. And the other thing is the parents. So if you're watching this video, um, figure out a way to help me get this in front of parents to help show what manufacturing can be to dispel some of the misconceptions about it and show what a wonderful uh, opportunity it can be in a variety of, of sort of industries or, or career little snippets that is pretty darn recession proof because of how versatile it can be. It can be across different industries, different locations within the country, but I wanna do what we can to spread the word. Um, but again, thank you to Matt, really an incredible facility. We had fun talking about our Johnny Five build and seeing all of the robots uh, that they had there at WSU. I finally got buzzed in to this room, which I, I just don't even know what to say. I mean, there was a point in time where I don't even think there were that many of these machines in the US or world. It is the DMG Mori additive subtractive hybrid laser sintering five axis machine. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. You can see here it's able to center down, build up that material, but as it builds it up, it can switch heads back to a five axis DMG milling machine and machine stuff away. Just absolutely incredible. So the competition is both machining and welding. Obviously I care a lot more about the machining, but the welding part is pretty cool. They're having to weld a pressure vessel. It needs to hold uh, 30 PSI. They're gonna do a water submerged test on it. Um, it's TIG welding. And again, you know, not my wheelhouse, but still pretty cool to see, uh, first off, to see the lab. And um, I do have a lot of respect for the, uh, the fact that this is not just a single focus type of competition, but rather kind of an all-encompassing project management, machining, welding, teamwork, all, all that stuff. So they are in uh, these respective booths. So it's all TIG, but obviously this is TIG. Yep. So aluminum base. Mm -hmm. it, oh, but this holds pressure as well because it's coming through this. So I'm not sure if they welded on the inside there or not. Okay. But I would think that this holds pressure as well. They got a way to put bungs in here. And yeah, because I think it comes up through the bottom of the machining part, which mates onto this. Right, and that's where they bolt it on. Okay. Uh, but I think this has to hold pressure. They got it going through here. Yep. And going through here, but they got a way to hook pressure here and here. Okay. So. And they make the tank. Mm-hmm. Cool. And you know, we got pressure here. This end closed off. Yep. So. And do they um, have a, a welding positioner or is this no, all hand done? They're doing it all by hand. Okay. They got to hold pressure and if you don't have it MIG welded correctly, yeah. it's not going to hold pressure and it's going to leak past somewhere if you got some uh, undercut or lack of fusion or something okay. like that. So they water test these for bubbles? Yeah, so they'll put it in water and put air through here and then yeah. it'll bubble out if it has a leak. And if there is a leak, uh, can you fix that? I think they have 24 hours that they get, or they have a day that they get to fix it is what I was told. How, how do you know where the leak is? Um, I think you could pretty much, like if you looked at this weld a little bit, you could almost tell that it could possibly leak somewhere. You could inspect you can see, You can see it, okay. For the most part. But it's not like a dive penetrant where you can just see a bright spot where you Right, goofed. you're not gonna see that. And the that. judges might mark it or something to okay. see where it leaks. Got it. 
Uh, I'm not really sure this is our first time with this. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. All right, good morning. Day three here at the Project MFG Finals. And this is actually really cool. They are doing the pressure testing, so we'll uh, sneak over here without getting yelled at by the film crew to show the parts that they had to weld together. So they had to use MIG on the steel vessel here, but then the pressure will flow into there. And this aluminum thing that was stick together is also pressurized. I believe it'll throw up through the gasket there. So they're gonna pressurize these things, dunk them in water, and we'll see if there are any bubbles in there. You guys feeling good about it? Yeah. Awesome. Well, nice job. Thank you. So here, I'm trying to stay out of the way and be quiet, but what they were doing was they were checking to see if there were leaks in the MIG welded steel tank and the TIG welded aluminum part. So they would both spray soapy water after it had been pressurized, and then they would also pressurize it and dunk it in a water tank and look to see if there were bubbles. And I think most of them had some amount of leaks at one point. In some respects, I think the welding part, I wanna say it was harder than the machining, but um, we were kind of looking at it and I thought if I had to machine those parts, it wouldn't be something I would be nervous about. Now, the time constraints, it's not your machine, it's not your tooling, that all adds into it, but I didn't expect the welding to be I'll put it this way, it wasn't a slam dunk. So it was really interesting to see. And again, I don't know that much about welding, but pretty cool. All right, good morning. It is day two here at the Project MFG Championship, and I am with... Mark Bosworth. And Mark came up to me this morning and said, do you want to see my trailer? And I wasn't really sure what to say to that, except uh, we're about to go see something that looks like it's pretty incredible. You guys put this together a year ago? About a year ago. Okay. So we have four uh, Tormach vertical mills and two Tormach lathes, and. 10 laptops with master cam on there and we take it to high schools to recruit it for our program. So you take it to get students to come into your, and yeah. you are with? Southwestern Illinois College. Okay. Yeah, and so you guys are? Right across from St. Louis. Okay. Well, first off, look at this thing. This is incredible. Who, whose idea was this? Kind of our brainstorm. Yeah. You know, we just, you know, there's a lot of schools that don't have a machining program. Yeah. We want to make sure that they are introduced to machining. Yeah. So we, we had this idea, we got a grant from the state of Illinois, and we ordered a trailer and started to put it together. How many people told you you were crazy? Um, not too many. Really? Yeah. This yeah. is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, some people, you know, it's, it's just to show students that there's a viable career out there, and just introduce them to CNC machining. And, and, and what's available to them. So and, and the machine, we're gonna, well, let's go, but they, yes, they run, right? Yeah. They, oh, this yeah. works? Okay. Oh, yeah. You have a compressor, everything on here? Yes. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. So it's air conditioned, it's heat, we've got our own compressor, own generator. We can pull up to anywhere, fire it up, fire these machines up, and we're ready to go. There's a UR robot. Yeah. This is incredible. They're all, so they're all bolted down. They're all bolted down. Oh my God. I like the uh, control systems you've got yeah. on these. So these are the Tormach and it's all touch screen too. So yeah, we yeah. wanted to get all high tech. So that's what No, we seriously, wanted. yeah. And, and so, you know, we could have used just a regular computer, but we like touch right. screen. And, you know, we take it, we, we make these little name plates. Yeah. And then we can go out there and students can, you know, type their name in there. Yeah. Put it right on the machine and have a name plate so they can take it home. This. Yeah is absolutely incredible yeah this is absolutely amazing oh my gosh so our, our goal for for this summer is we're going to actually have this tormach machine ton with the ur robot yes okay and then we're also put in to get some more pocket nc's yep. to introduce five vacs yep. machining to the students too yeah so you know we just want to show all the technology that's out there yes yeah. good, good for you the world <laughs> needs more of this this is incredible 215 l's I, I can't believe this. A Haas controller. Look at this. It kind of reminds me of, uh, every once in a while you'll see folks talk about the old World War II Army yeah. uh, machine shop in a, in a what, a 15-ton truck, whatever they call it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so up by St. Louis, there's a refineries there, and there's actually a machine shop that has like an 18-wheeler yeah. mobile machine shop. Yeah. That's kind of where I got the little bit mm -hmm. of an idea. But they just go to the refinery, and when they got to shut down, they do all the machine work right in that trailer. Yeah. So, 
So let's try to do it for this. You guys put down some miles on this? You get around? We, we, this year, like I said, we've been like 55 schools this year. So wow. we go to grade schools, middle schools, and mainly high schools. But yeah. you know, two weeks ago, we were at a middle school, seventh and eighth graders. Yeah. And they were just amazed. Yes. You know? So it was, yes. we talked to them about careers, we talked to them about the robots, talked to them about CNC machining. Yeah. And just, just to see the students' eyes. It's just, right. they've never seen it. Oh, this is yes. cool. So. That's what, look, that's what I said. I, I don't care if you don't want to be a machinist, but I don't want kids to get to a certain point in life and not have realized there's a thing out yeah. there called machining. Absolutely. There's elements of CAM programming, of post-processors, of setup, of fixturing, of actually just running the machines. It's like yes. wonderfully rewarding. Yes. Awesome. Thank so, you for the tour. No problem. It's really cool. So folks, thanks for watching. This gets me fired up about what we all can do to encourage folks to pay it forward. What I care about isn't whether somebody ends up in machining. I want the next generation to know what careers are out there, what options there are. But again, what occurred to me from this week is it's not just about inspiring the students. I want to help figure out ways to inspire the next generation of teachers. And I want to try to do more to spread the word to parents. Project MFG is actually being backed by the Department of Defense at some level and they're recognizing it as a matter of national security. And that really resonated with me to think about what this means for how we succeed and just how critical it is. It's not just about the profitability in the private sector, it's a whole nother level. And it reminds me when we had the chance to do that, part of the Smithsonian build for the Apollo 50th anniversary, and we were kind of reflecting on what that Apollo program was 50 plus years ago. And you can't just take money and throw money at a problem like sending a man to the moon. You have to have multiple generations of metrology people and metallurgy people and machinists and fabricators and welders and develop new technologies. And there's a wonderful story. I think about a, a group in Massachusetts. I think it was mostly women who were really good at sewing and helped sew some of the um, parachute recovery things. And you had this ablative heat shield. It gets me all excited, but it's not just a problem that is quickly solved. It's a long game and I love throwing resources and energy at the long game. And the long game is let's get folks inspired uh, around teaching, educating, parents helping encourage and make decisions, and ultimately students uh, be finding a passion in manufacturing or whatever career um, fits you. So we'll update the description when we hear more about when and where Project MFG, the formal video is going to be released. As always folks, hope you enjoyed something. Hope you learned something. Take care, see you soon.